Hi guys and welcome. It's Lavender Sky Panther with you on Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. Literally hopping on now for a quick little reading. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to wait till tomorrow. Well, later tomorrow anyway. Something said, no, nope, let's just go ahead and do it now. So here we are. Now it's not going to be a pick a card reading this time. It's um, I, I did select cards connecting in of what would be good for everybody. Uh, you know, whatever anyone out there, if you're finding this video, what you need to hear right now. And even if it's just one or two things out of the whole reading that kind of click with you or inspire you in some way, bring a smile to your face. That's all this is about. So I did go ahead and pick the cards because I don't have the uh, tripod method. I'm just um, holding the camera and it, it's easier and it flows better for me to do it this way. I'm leaving my sea life sea theme up and added a couple new little lights um, before I change it out for something else. So uh, toward the end, we'll probably pick out one. Uh, I'll close my eyes and shuffle through and we'll pick out one figurine as a little animal for extra messages, maybe sea life thing. And um, let's see. And we'll probably go to a couple bonus cards, which are spirit animals, animal spirits. Okay. So for right now, this is what we're going to do. It's not pick a card this time, but instead we're going to do a format where it's uh, just to simplify it, past energies, present energies, future energies, undercurrent of the reading and overarching or overall encompassing energies of the reading. All right. That's, we're just going to keep it that basic and simple. So let's get into it. Now, when I say past and future, that could be very recent past, more distant past, you know, really coming up fast future or a little bit in the distant future, but we'll see. All right, well, let's go. First card up is soulmate relationship representing the past energies. And we have new romance with a spiritual basis is here for you now. Now, of course, all of these cards can be interpreted in any number of ways. So it's just going to come out of my mouth what's meant to come out right now as I try to connect in with these cards, just keeping all good and highest intentions uh, for all good, harmonious things and upliftment for all of you. And may something in here ring true for you in a very beautiful way. All right. So this card, we have two embraced dolphins that are spiling upward. Now, what I get here is not in so much as your romantic soulmate relationship vibe off of this, although it very well could be. Um, but what I'm getting more is you really connecting into who you truly are and letting the masculine and feminine balance out and merge into um, you. Like you're embodying now and embracing both of the, like a unified field of the masculine and, masculine and feminine in a balanced and very powerful way. And once you're connected in, you know, like almost like a lightning rod anchored into the ground, you know, with that like strike hitting you, that divine light flowing through you, I feel like that's happened. And now you can rise up again now that you've grounded down and know who you are and are owning it and embodying all who you are, the totality of who you are. You're now able to float upward and just move in like a spiral of, uh, you know, um, what I want to say, even, you know, growing even more in, you know, spiritual enlightenment, you know, they're heading up toward, toward the sun and getting that breath of fresh air into a new life of somebody who's in full awareness of who you are, owning who you are in totality and in, in complete, uh, in total completeness, <laughs> that state of it. And you're just ever swirling up on a spiral of life and just getting better and better in who you are. Now, of course, this could also be that, you have either physically found your soulmate or you have in your mind a very strong feeling and connection that there is one out there for you. Even if you don't see the other person's face, you just know by the heart signature. Okay. And um, anyway, I think that's, that's about all for now. So uh, it's about two, they're underwater, just really feeling into where you're headed and just imagining, wow, I wonder what it'd be like uh, for this, this, and this, like just the most beautiful outcome for my life. And if you already feel you're in there in that moment right now, then great. You can just, you're embracing, embodying that moment, but just keep in mind, it can get ever better and better as we, as you're spiraling up, you know, in life. Okay. So that's past or recent past. So you're just feeling, you know, solid in you and things are just moving in an ever better direction, infinitely so. And since you're able to capture that moment or soon are going to be able to move into that moment as you spiral up, maybe you're kind of down here, not quite there yet, but pretty soon you will be if you're not already. Then we get to the present energies of treasure chest and look how amazingly beautiful this card is. 
this mermaid is just opening up this treasure chest and look at that glow. If that does not symbolize, look at the look on her face. You know, that's what we all just like close your eyes and like imagine that's you opening that chest up and just seeing this glow. It's like you don't even need to see each individual coin or jewel. That glow of light is all you need to know that everything is, you know, coming your way, literally. And it says an unforeseen windfall of new abundance comes to you now. Emphasis on the now, not next, you know, year, not, you know, far off decades. No, it's saying, hey, get into this now moment. This abundance is yours right now with an unforeseen windfall. Now, that doesn't mean something negative is happening. That can be also something very positive is happening in order for that windfall to come. Now, um, the card beneath it, because two jumped out for the uh, present uh, energies, okay? Let me just move it over here for now, and then I'll take it away and we'll get into the, into the future. So we've got the un unforeseen windfall of abundance coming to you now. And as you can see, it is unforeseen because she's completely surprised by it, wowed by it. Now we have positive energy. And we scan down this card. It's lighter palette. It's almost very dreamlike with all these dolphins jumping. And uh, we can't tell like if they're, at least I can't. You know, it looks like they're all underwater with the rays of light coming down. But it's almost like they could also be above a lake jumping and down from the heavens, however you want to, you know, read it. These rocks almost look like lily pads to me. But anyway, I love that there's this golden light again echoing what? This. So it's almost like we're underwater. And that's probably where that mermaid just opened up this chest. So that tells me if, it, if, it's ha if it's not happening right this instant or this doesn't even come to you in a dream, maybe it's just a dream where you see a scene like this of total abundance and then that guides you to take actions or means it's coming soon in your life. But because it's in the very next card, like we're an observer and we're looking way off to the distance and that's where she's sitting and opening this chest with that glow, that means it could very well come very soon or it's heading your way soon because all the dolphins are moving in that direction too. And these dolphins are representing luck, happiness, tremendous good fortune, abundance because there's so many of them, right? And happiness and playfulness, which is the state we need to be in to receive such bounty. You know, you're not going to really get great news and, and things like that coming to you if you're down in the dumps. You know, you first are going to have to move up out of the dumps to get to a little bit higher vibration before stuff like this will just flow into your life. OK, so surround yourself with positive people. Yes. And situations avoid negativity. Yes. So that you can have this flow come to you. Now, sometimes a little bit of harder decision, decisions need to made make <laughs> to be made. Like, well, does that mean I, you know, have to cut, release some friends, this and that? Yeah, well, for the time being, in the immediate future, you might. Does it mean they're cut off forever? No, but they might have to catch up to a little bit of a higher vibration of where you're at. Otherwise, those negativities will suck you down and deny you some of these most amazing experiences right? So you got to make a conscious effort maybe. And you kind of feel it if somebody's in your circle and they're just being real negative or negative enough that you don't feel good. You don't also have to just cut that relationship. You can just distance a little bit from it, like, you know, arm's length and you'll know when to engage with those energies or when it's better not to, right? Okay. Anyway, now let's go to the underlying energies, like the undercurrent, if you will. And we have the, the water current. Um, this is a beautiful card, Synchronicity. And once again, beautiful dolphins. We have kind of like star or sun, if we can get their energy. Uh, beautiful, again, this burst, this glow of just like sudden abundance. And, and it's echoing, you know, this card it really is that, you know, we've got this burst of um, magnificence coming your way. And everyone's really excited about it. You know, this could be your, your inner joy leaping for joy at what's going to come and it's unforeseen so it's a total happy surprise and we've got all these crystals look at the abundance and we've got different colored ones like amethyst probably come some kind of citrine or calcite orange calcite and all different colors of the rainbow under here but we also have the clear quartz which just amplifies the heck out of all the most positive aspects of those crystals so really it is like all fortune and sunshine and favor coming your way that's the underlying current. Now, again, there are a few things that you have to do. It's nothing overtaxing or anything, but it's just knowing who you are, embodying and full who you are, embracing the totality of you 
so you can spiral ever upward, you know, open up, get to find that treasure chest to even see it and um, surround yourself with positive people and just know, you know, know we're getting to the future now because I didn't read this yet, that you are worthy of this bounty. We're moving into this card. Sorry, I'm jumping a little fast and I wanted faster than I wanted to. But then the future is you just knowing you are worthy too. And when you know that you deserve uh, to receive good in all ways, then you're going to receive even more windfalls. You know, they'll come your way. Now, um, coming back down to this card, the under uh, undercurrent or underlying energies, I just wanted to say, um, well, we'll read it. It says, your prayers and questions are being answered by synchronistic events. Notice them in order to increase their flow. And that that's actually true, too, because one example is I wasn't sure if I should book myself, book a reading with someone. And I decided, you know what? Sure, I think I should. I think it's time. So I booked the reading, but something within me was like, ah, oh, man, should I have... Should I have just waited and just moved through life, continue to do it and just see what things come my way, see if any surprises and flow pop up or, you know, is it the right timing to have booked a reading? I don't know. Um, but I had an opportunity to do it and I just did it, even though I wasn't quite sure. Normally, I like to be sure with my intuition and connected, uh, but I didn't quite get the all, you know, total all clear. Yeah, let's do it. I just thought, you know, this time, why not? I'll do it. I don't think I can really go wrong. Well, it, because that feeling was kind of nagging at me, like, was it the right timing? Should I have just let things lie and, and just experience life and not get a reading? But then I had to go physically into a business to go pay for, for a bill. And I really didn't want to go in there. I just wanted to maybe call it in or, or pay. I, I really don't like to pay online. So I just said, nah, you know, I'll go in. It's close enough. I'll go pay it in person. Now, in the back of my mind, I'm also, I got a little message, and maybe this applies to you, and it was, don't overthink it, don't worry about your calling going online or going in person, because it's not even about paying the bill. It's about me showing up and interacting with people. As you know, in our world today, they're, they're, uh, they, this, the quote-unquote system, is more and more replacing human jobs, you know, making everything automated. And so that's another reason kind of why I want to I use the phone because I wait, I reach customer service. I don't go through automated stuff. And, um, and so in this case, I'm like, no, it's good because I'm going to see an actual person. Let's, let's keep those jobs open for people that want those and not, you know, go automated. So anyway, long story short, I go there and something had said, it's not even about you paying the bill. It's about you, meaning me, showing up with your presence and letting, you know, your inner light shine and just being there is going to be enough. It's kind of like um, synchronously, like the other side is just saying, show up because that person might just, you might say something that person needs for their synchronicity, you know, to happen for them, to give them a, a click or an aha moment of an affirmation that they're looking for, or just your glow and your presence is going to be needed for them to be in that room. So I just said, okay, I get it. You want me just to show up to be there on a spiritual level. It's not even really about the bill. The bill is just kind of a loose little guise to go there and show up, right? Anyway, I go there and what happens? The person I was dealing with, she got, we got into a whole spiritual discussion, of course, after we did the business transaction. And a lot of things were lighting up for her in our talk. And I also gave her some links to things to, to help and investigate further for what she was looking at. And then she just casually mentioned a name of someone in her family. And that was the exact name of somebody I booked with. So I'm like, okay, I get it. That was my, the synchronicity there was her even bringing up that subject and mentioning the name that served then as an affirmation for me to also tap into maybe, you know, some of the bounty and abundance that I'm going to hear. Maybe this is a wealth of information, not even a abundance doesn't have to be the coins, you know, and the jewels, you know, it could be a wealth of knowledge. It could be, you know, just somebody offering you comfort, like that sunshine, that warm and fuzzy hug, you know, that's abundance. Somebody's very abundant if you have that in your life. So anyway, um, Let's move on. I think you understand what I'm trying to tie together. It's not as smooth as I wanted to, but there you go. All right. So now we'll go to the overarching or the over uh, overall encompassing energies here. Okay. And we have another beautiful card, of course, 
and it says, uh, sorry, I got distracted by the candle. I don't want to set this whole set on fire here. Make a decision. Okay, so we've got blue skies, just enough clouds, so it's not too, too hot to create a little bit of break from the sun. We've got palm trees, although interestingly enough, we've got green ones in the back, and I guess they're brownish, but they're also a little bit golden, maybe. And we have these mermaids. They're just, they just look like they're kind of soaking, and they have some lotus flowers and lily pads around. So these mermaids actually seem to be like in a little uh, lagoon, like a little paradise getaway maybe kind of like a, a more secretive location that not everybody would be aware of, like on a main beach. It looks like a secluded little haven, right? So the message here is feeling stuck or indecisive. Listen to your intuition and make a decision. So listening to your intuition, yeah, that's fine and dandy when we can hear it. Uh, sometimes you might hear nothing because yeah, especially when you're feeling stuck, Actually, sometimes you don't hear a darn thing. So if this is the, the situation, it doesn't matter. You know, first, of course, listen to your intuition, your connected intuition to loving light. Make sure it's nothing negative you're connecting into, obviously. And sometimes, though, that's fine and dandy and you follow that intuition, even it's very faint. But sometimes it really feels like nothing. And so at that point, I think the message here is also uh, the overarching thing is in order for the, you know, the bounty to come in, Sometimes you do just have to make a decision whether you're connected with your intuition or not. Um, so like in my case, you know, I wasn't really sure. Uh, I didn't go by intuition on booking the reading for myself. I just kind of, I knew I wanted one with my head, my mind, but I didn't know connected wise if that was the thing to do. So I did actually just make a decision. I said, you know what? forget about it. I'm just booking it. We'll see what happens, right? <laughs> so that's when I got my information in a synchronistic way that this woman, it just kind of came out of even context that she would mention the name that I needed to hear as the affirmation on that booking, right? All right. So that's just a little example of uh, past energies, present and future. What could happen? It looks like everything is going to come up roses. And in this case, the sun is shining your way, illuminating your path, even you've got the moon full illuminating your path to greatness and good, all thing, all good things. So all you got to do is get square and set within yourself, feel solid and, you know, uh, and who you are and don't pretend to be anything else. So you can um, move ever upward, you know, and grow in, uh, in your spirituality and um, by making sure that you're surrounding yourself with positive people and situations, you can let that abundance flow in. And what do we say over here again? Knowing that you deserve the good in all ways. Just know it. She doesn't have to look up to the moon. She shouldn't have her eyes open wishing on a star. She's looking downward introspection, just knowing, kind of like she's fully embodying in who she is and just knowing she deserves it. And, you know, when I equate this to you and myself, we do, we do all deserve all great things and they are limitless and they are here to ever, you know, keep creating. So why not, you know, welcome that into your life, embrace it and be grateful and thankful for it. Right. And don't worry, don't be stuck. You know, you can always even make a little, the tiniest decision like, um, you know, even maybe, maybe listening to the intuition isn't about the decision that has you um, about a decision to be made that has you worried or whatever. Maybe it's as simple as, okay, I just woke up. Do I go nourish myself first and get something to eat or drink? Or do I shower and cleanse first? Or what, what, what should I do first? And maybe listen for that. And then that might lead you after you take that action into making an action that you were feeling stuck on, right? All right. Well, now let's do this. I will go, I'm going to close my eyes. And as I say, just going to have to trust me on this. I am truly closing my eyes and I'm scrambling here. I'm going to focus over here though. I am not looking over there and I'm just going to go by feel over which little, you know, sea life figurine I should take. And I think, nope, not feeling that. I don't know what they are. I'm trying to have a blank mind too. It's just whatever feels right to come into my hand is how I'm doing it. And this is also a great little um, practice for um, intuition. So this one's coming to me. Okay, now, <laughs> we had this before recently in a reading. How funny, because there are a lot of things that are shaped like this. Um, so this is, uh, I don't know if it's going to focus. Let me put it down over here. Okay, so we had this with the uh, squeeze ball, if you saw one of my previous readings, with the little 
globe uh, squeeze ball, and this was aligned with Antarctica, actually. Uh, so maybe that's a, a little call to go look at that reading and pick the uh, pile two it was. Anyway, uh, we have the jellyfish. Now what I want to say about this, this is just a fascinating creature, and this might also be just for fun. Maybe if you're having a hard time in life right now, uh, maybe you're on the floor crying, I'll just say it. This is just coming to me. This might be somebody out there. Um, you know, in order to get out of that crying state and, and lower vibration, I'm not making a judgment, but it is, in order to get out of that so you can let your abundance come, um, you might want to start reading things like get a book that might interest you because what it will do is distract your mind from crying and what your troubles are. And maybe uh, if you don't have an interesting book, usually something will come your way. Someone will mention something to you and that's your sign to go follow it so that you can keep your mind occupied with knowledge and, and learning new things rather than dwelling maybe on a loop of negativity and crying so maybe this is your start. Instead of a book, maybe I'm letting you know to kind of research different types of jellyfish. Now, I haven't seen one of these myself that looks exactly like this, you know, with the blue on the top of the dome and the orange below. So maybe I can give you a little treasure hunt to distract yourself from crying. First of all, know that I am with you and encouraging spirit and sending you family-friendly hugs for support and encouragement if you're going through something really difficult. I think it's safe to say we have all been there in really tough situations and unbelievable situations and, and feeling horrible. So know that I'm with you and I'm with you and I'm and I'm like if you can imagine this is not me, but if I imagine that's me and I'm lifting that lid up because I want to uplift you and send you all good things. Okay. I want to send you this glow of light. Close your eyes. Imagine this beautiful golden light right over the center of your chest coming to you as a warm and fuzzy hug and know that you are not alone and you will move through this. Definitely cry through your emotions. Once you feel like it's your ear, let a little break with it and can get up the off the floor enough or just stay sitting on the floor, but then shift your energy into researching and reading stuff. And my little treasured hunt for you is if you don't have an idea of me mentioning, go look up stuff on jellyfish information on it to distract your brain, get your brain engaged so that you're out of your mind loop of whatever it's dwelling on in negativity. Um, my little treasure hunt challenge for you is to go online. If you have a little handheld device um, and look up, jellyfish and look up uh even in the search engine just say like blue and blue orange and white jellyfish and just see what comes up and see if you can find an image that matches this if you do find it let me know in the comment section below if you like or if you find something close or let that search take you into all kinds of jellyfish and what they can do and what you know researchers are finding about their capabilities and all of that Okay, so expanding the mind with knowledge is also a great way to, you know, get to this state where this flow can come to you if you're not there. If you're already flying high and on top of the world, well, you probably already know it. More synchronicities seem to happen and you seem to get more and more surprises and treasures coming on your path unexpectedly, right? And if you don't for some reason, but you're still flying high in a good vibe, um, start giving out random acts of kindness, whether it's smiles, hugs little tokens like these figurines. I give little things like this out all the time. I call them tokens of appreciation. And, uh, you know, people usually light up. They're happy to get a little like a surprise, right? Who, who doesn't like little nice surprises? <laughs> and if you don't, maybe you got to start. <laughs> Some more can come into your life, right? Okay. That's all I'm getting for now. And let me, um, I think people like bonus cards and if not, I do. So we're going to do it. Let me go ahead and do, we're going to do two decks, you know, over here. I already pre-shuffled. We're going to do like the uh, the messy strewn about spread. You know, these don't really spread like that so well. Some decks really slide and glide nicer than others, but it's okay. It's good enough. All right. So now, um, like I always say, see which one you would pick. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go with this one though. And I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder so it gets a little weird. So hold on one second. I'm going to switch hands on the camera. Let me prop it up at the candle and hopefully not burn the place down. Hold on, here we go. Um, oh, by the way, it's a lavender and white sage candle, which is amazing if you can get your hands on one. A soy candle, very healthy and natural. All right, speaking of healthy and natural, we have this sloth hanging down uh, on the branch. I can't tell what that is. Oh, that's his hand. Okay, or her hand. 
And look at that's a state of beautiful peace and happiness right there, contentment. So we have digital detox and it says recalibrate, reset and recharge. I am all in favor of the digital detox. I need that myself. So as soon as you have, if this applied to you with the jellyfish, I think I booted it off the table. I don't know where it went. But if if I if you were going to take me up on that little uh, treasure hunt challenge and look up everything about that jellyfish, do that and then get off the device. Then go find an actual book with paper, you know, a paper and print book. Nothing on digital, not any of those like Kindle things. And, and read and hold a book in your hands where you turn the pages and preferably also see beautiful pictures, okay? Um, because it is so important how we intake information, especially when you think of light quality. Like for me, oh my goodness, the warmth of a beautiful candle, candlelight is so much more beautiful than the very abrasive LED lights that we have now. Those LED lights don't even get me started. They interfere with our vision, our auric field, they're very disturbing on many levels, seen and unseen. And so uh, that's why a lot of the incandescent lights have been taken off the market altogether. We should be able to have a choice. More and more, there's no choice anymore. They're pushing the harsh, interfering, aura, aura interfering um, white LED lights. So anyway, maybe as a part of your detox, your digital detox, turn off any white LEDs you might have, white glaring ones. Maybe, you know, find some nice candlelight and light it. Or here, these are these little fairy lights, you know, that I have in these jars, which give out a nice light, you know, because they have now lights like this blue, blue and green filter of the glass behind them to change the quality of the light a bit. So it's not so harsh and abrasive LED. Um, so that's just what I'm getting. But just, you know, the overall message here, of course, is just to, you know, relax, treat yourself right, take a load off, literally, you know, this little sloth is using, you know, just hanging on, letting letting itself swing in the air to be kind of as weightless as it can get. So you might want to do that. Just go hang on a branch so you're a little weightless, you know, and it's a nice stretch on the body. And, of course, you can go weightless, you know. I'm trying to get the right card, but this will do. You know, go weightless and, and float in a little pool or, you know, just in the shallow part of a beach, you know, just kind of let yourself float a little bit. If you can't get to a body of water where it's, you know, safe from, you know, animal dangers or, or other, you know, human security issues, dangers, um, maybe you can just um, put a, a bowl of water, you know, set out a little bowl of water and let a leaf float in it, <clears throat> excuse me, or flower petal float on it or whatever. You get the idea. Let something float on it and look at the bowl and just imagine that, you know, you are that item floating and feel that, feel into the weightlessness and the peace of that, okay? All right, now we'll do one more or animal-oriented deck. And uh, here I'm going to start on this side and we'll spread it the other way. No rhyme or reason to it just because I feel like it, okay? And I've already shuffled this a lot and we'll see where we get to. All right, see which card you would choose. I'm on the fence actually between this one and this one but like our card back there in the overall energies said you know listen to your intuition and make a decision so i will make a decision and you know what i was feeling this one but i'm gonna go with this one nope i am feeling more this one i'm going with my intuition okay Ooh, i see why how funny why would i have picked this card i ask you well what is a mountain lion a mountain lion is a panther, and if you look at my handle, my channel name, you know that's really funny. All right, and actually, by the way, mountain lion for a pan it can also sometimes be panther, although a panther actually is more like a leopard or a um, jaguar. But mountain lion is for, you know, uh, what we'll say Florida panther. I'm in Florida. Also, it's uh, another name is cougar, catamount, even ghost cat. There's so many names for this beautiful, beautiful cat. Now, big cat. So this this that comes to us with a message of is my pursuit both honorable and focused? Hmm. Stalk. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a funny thing. Now, I like the question. Is the pursuit honorable and focused? Well, a, a panther does symbolize and embrace um so many beautiful spirit animal meanings for this. And uh, just so you know, the short version of it is, is that the, uh, the mountain lion does embody the spirit meaning of being noble, distinguished, patient, uh, good with strategy, and uh, honorable, it would fall into that category. Now, stalk, 
Hmm. That's interesting, right? We know that cats, they, they stalk things. They even like get into a crouched position, start wiggling their butt, right? Before they go and pounce on something and they're very stealthy and they just, it can sneak up. There can be a mountain lion in the brush and you don't even know it. That's why they call them ghost cat. I think it's more of a native American term for them because they are stealthy. You wouldn't even know they're there. They're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're, they're observing things for a while before they engage, right? So maybe this is just a message for, uh, yeah, if you're going to be pursuing something, uh, you know, just a little check-in for yourself, making sure you're in alignment with your higher, highest self, by highest version of you, that your intentions are all good and in alignment if you're going after something and focused on something. Stalk to me because there's a green background. Also reminds me actually of a physical stalk, like the old, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, right? So something growing and living and something that takes time and patience, you know, to spring up out of the ground so it can grow really like good and healthy. Like stock also reminds me of something very good and healthy, robust, almost like bamboo, right? Um, so anyway, it's just a little, maybe a little check-in. I don't think it's any deep message for today. Just if you are going after something, just make sure it's in, you know, you're, you're looking at it and approaching it with, um, from the eyes, you know, keen eyes of, of the highest version of yourself and let that come through in that situation. Okay, everyone. Well, I think that's it for now. Wish you tremendous peace and love. And until next time, love your Sky Panther. Bye.